Hello everyone and welcome to another video. We see more and more Ryzen laptops on the market, and honestly, it's great. Competition is always good for the end users. I've made three Ryzen 4000 videos so far. One about an entry-level Lenovo, then a 2-in-1 Dell, then an HP gaming laptop with a 4600H, and finally, today, we have this beast from ASUS with the Ryzen 9 4900H. The Ryzen 9 4900H is currently the best mobile CPU that AMD offers. Before we check it out, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can make more videos. This model currently sells for 1700 Canadian dollars or 1400 British pounds. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find this exact model in the United States. This is a tough gaming laptop and it looks tough too. The lid has a brushed aluminum finish and I like the tough gaming laptop detail here. The build quality falls short at this price point. The places you touch frequently are metal, while the rest is plastic. There's a significant keyboard and screen flex. Also, it's 2020, we don't need a hard drive status indicator, and we definitely don't need any of these LEDs up here. On the other hand, they flatten the bottom corners so they won't hurt your legs when you use the laptop on your lap. The HP I recently tested was half as expensive, but it had a much better build quality. Let's have a look at the specs now. It has an 8-core, 16-thread AMD Ryzen 9 4900H processor with a base clock of 3GHz, a boost clock of 4.4GHz, and a total cache of 11MB. As I mentioned earlier, this is AMD's flagship mobile processor at this time. It also has an NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics unit. We'll talk more about the processor and the GPU later, but for now, let's have a look at the rest of the specs. It has a 15.6-inch 1080p IPS screen. It's also 144Hz, which is a nice plus. It has 16GB of DDR4 RAM in single channel and an Intel 660p 512GB NVMe SSD. There are two RAM slots in total, so you can upgrade the RAM. It also has Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth 5.0, a 720p camera, a 48Wh battery, and an RGB backlit keyboard. It doesn't have a fingerprint scanner, and it doesn't support Windows Hello Facial Recognition either. As I mentioned earlier, it sells for 1700 Canadian dollars. You have plenty of alternatives at this price point, and we'll compare them all. First up, we have an ASUS ROG laptop with an i7 10750H and a GTX 1660 Ti. Then we have another ROG, but this time with a Ryzen 7 4800HS and a 1660 Ti. Next up, we have a Dell with an i7 9750H and an RTX 2060. And finally, for $100 more, we have yet another ROG, but this time with an i7 10750H and an RTX 2060. Speaking of tough and ROG, Tough is unofficially the budget tier gaming laptops, while the ROG line is more perceived as a premium line. This explains why this laptop's build quality isn't great. We will also compare all these laptops with my desktop with a Ryzen 7 3800X and an AMD Radeon 7. In terms of ports, there's a barrel type charging port, one HDMI 2.0 port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C port, one USB 2.0 port for some reason, one Ethernet port, and one headphone microphone combo jack. The USB-C port supports display output and power delivery, and I like that the included HDMI version is 2.0, so it supports 4K output at 60Hz. On the other hand, I would expect a Thunderbolt port at this price point. I'm also repeating what I said in the last couple of videos. It's 2020, no one wants a USB 2.0 port. By the way, it weighs 2.3 kilograms. You can open its lid with one hand. This might not seem like a big deal, but it just feels nice. The 15.6-inch 1080p screen is 144Hz, but it only covers 45% of the NTSC color gamut. ASUS didn't mention anything about the brightness on their product page, but a quick Google search tells us that it's 281 nits. It'll be perfectly fine for gaming and daily use, but you might want to get an external monitor if you intend to do professional video or photo editing. Top and side bezels are thin, while the bottom bezel is quite thick. Unlike the HP I recently tested, ASUS went for a more traditional hinge design. It has a chiclet style keyboard with plenty of travel. There is quite some space in between keys, and the keys are quite large too. While there is an unpad, I feel like it's too small. It also lacks an indicator. Same goes for the arrow keys. They are tiny. The F keys are grouped into four, like on a desktop keyboard. Regardless of all that, it takes some time to get used to it, but once you do, it's fun to type on it. It's also not super loud, which is a nice plus. It has one zone RGB lighting, and it can be controlled through the Aura software. It has a Windows Precision trackpad and is quite large. You can't click the actual trackpad though, you have to use the physical buttons underneath. It doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, but the reception is pretty good. The speeds you see on the screen are gathered at the same spot using the same server. When I first got this computer, I thought this was a speaker grill, but turns out it was just a fan exhaust and the speakers are bottom firing. 
The sound quality is fine, but I don't think they go loud enough. Before we start benchmarking, let me tell you real quick how I test these laptops. Every time I get a new laptop, I basically stop using my Dell, which is my daily driver, and switch to the new laptop. This way, I can see all its strengths and weaknesses better. Let's start with Cinebench. As usual, our AMD processors are on 7 nanometers, while the Intel ones are on 14 nanometers. Here, we see that the 4900H performs around 5% better in single core and 42% better in multi core than the 10750H. If we compare the 9750H instead of the 10750H, the difference becomes 12% in single core and 61% in multi core. Keep in mind that both the 9750H and the 10750H have 6 cores and 12 threads. If we compare the 4900H with the 8 core 16 thread i7 10875H, the difference in multi core Cinebench is 18%, but the 10875H actually performs 7% better in Cinebench R15 single core. On the other hand, if we compare the 4900H with the Ryzen 7 3800X, which is a desktop processor, we'll see that the difference is only 7% in single and 16% in multi core. This is very impressive. In PC Mark 10 productivity, we see that the results are somewhat close to one another. Our ASUS with the 4900H performs around 7% better than the similarly priced Intel laptops. The Gigabyte with the 10875H performs slightly better than our ASUS, but keep in mind that it is an RTX 2070 Max-Q. On the other hand, our ASUS performs 22-27% to better than our similarly priced Intel laptops in digital content creation. It performs slightly worse than the Gigabyte. All of our laptops perform significantly worse than our desktop, both in productivity and digital content creation. We then converted a 1200MB 4K 30fps video to a 1080p MKV using the YouTube preset. Here, while we see that our ASUS performs 17-40% to better than our Intel laptops, it's only 7% faster than the 4800H. Handbrake can take advantage of multiple cores and threads, and that's the reason why our ASUS finishes the conversion significantly faster than the 9750H and the 10750H. Exporting in Premiere is a demanding task for both the CPU and the GPU, so let's check that out. On my SSD, I have an 8 minute 4K project with audio and plenty of effects, so let's check out the export performance. Here, we see that our ASUS performs 7 to 20% better than our Intel stack. On the other hand, while it performs better than the AMD laptops we're comparing it to, the difference is less than 4%. Our desktop performs 22% better than the ASUS. Looking at 7-zip benchmarks, we see that our ASUS is performing 100 to 150% better than our Intel laptops. It also surpasses other AMD laptops by a large margin. The 4900H is just amazing. Let's check 3 Mark before we start gaming. Fire Strike graphics is mainly GPU bound, while physics is CPU bound, and it shows. In graphics, it's pretty much tied with other laptops that have a 2060, and it falls behind the Gigabyte with the 2070 Max-Q. It performs around 20% better than the laptops with the 1660 Ti. On the other hand, physics is where our ASUS shines. It's pretty much tied with the 4800H, 4800HS, and the 10875, while performing around 20% better than the other Intel laptops, regardless of the GPU. And with this, let's move on to gaming. This is a gaming laptop, so we have a lot to cover here. In CSGO, our ASUS averaged 210 FPS at 1080p high. It performs slightly worse than the Intel laptops with the same GPU, but at least you still get to take full advantage of the 144 screen. The laptops with the 1660 Ti perform slightly worse, and the Gigabyte with the 2070 performs around 50% better. Moving to GTA 5, we see that the results are rather close to one another. Our ASUS averaged 143 FPS, which is not bad. It's comparable to other 2060 powered laptops, but it performs around 20% worse than the Gigabyte with the 2070. Our ASUS performs similarly to the other 2060 powered laptops in the rest of our games. While the CPU has an effect on the gaming performance, we see that the averages here are pretty much determined by the GPU. The only exception to this is in Division 2, where our ASUS with the 4900H performed around 10% better than the Dell with the 9750H. Speaking of frame rates, let's talk about the 144Hz screen. I didn't think it would make a difference in day-to-day -day use, but it does. Everything feels smoother thanks to the high refresh rate. On the other hand, as you can see in the chart, our ASUS can't really hit 144fps in games. I appreciate the 144 screen, but I feel like they could have gone for a panel with better color accuracy and a relatively lower refresh rate. As I mentioned earlier, it has a 48 watt hour battery, which is not bad. As usual, there wasn't a battery life figure on the product page, so I didn't know what to expect. 
In light use, the battery lasted 6 hours and 50 minutes, which is serviceable. In a more moderate use, it could only last 5 hours and 2 minutes. I noticed that the discrete GPU kicked in more often than it should have, and that had a big impact on the battery life. On the other hand, it lasts 45 minutes to 2 hours in a gaming session. It has 3 fan modes, silent, performance, and turbo. I did all my tests in turbo mode. The fans are always audible in this mode, and the CPU idles around 48 degrees. Under an all car load, the CPU quickly boosts up to 4 GHz and it's 95 degrees Celsius. The fans then kick in at full blast and the CPU goes down to around 3.8 GHz. After 5 minutes, we see that the CPU stays around 95 degrees and between 3.8 and 4 GHz. The right side of the keyboard gets somewhat toasty, but the rest of the computer stays cool. In a CPU-GPU combined load, we had a much different story. The 4900H quickly hits 95 degrees but only stays at 3.4 GHz. The 2060 also quickly hits 80 degrees. This isn't even the weird part yet. I can't tell if it's a problem with the power or the thermal design. The CPU is constantly at 95 degrees, but after 5 minutes, it was actually running below its base clock. I decided to stop stress testing the GPU after 5 minutes, and the CPU jumped back to 3.5 GHz right away. So, let's check the prices of the laptops that we compared our ASUS to. Looking at laptops that cost $1,700, we see that our ASUS performed better in both CPU and GPU intensive tasks. We also see that our ASUS is tied with other RTX 2060 powered laptops in GPU intensive tasks. I knew that the thermals of this laptop weren't great before I got it, but honestly, it doesn't seem to be a problem in daily use or in games. It's only an issue where both the GPU and the CPU are being used 100%. Aside from that, it could use a better screen and the build quality could be better. On the other hand, it has a great GPU and a great CPU and it performed very well in both benchmarks and games. The fact that you have an 8-core 16-thread processor means that you'll still have good frame rates when you're streaming. It has an RGB backlit keyboard and the laptop looks great in general. Overall, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, this is a great option at $1700. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Take care.